the second priority vote will be transferred to other four candidates right and now votes will be again counted so numbers tally has improved anushka which has secured uh, 30 votes in the first stage of the counting she has secured 32 candidates uh, 32 votes 29 votes upsc notes ritu 17 votes and himalaya ras 22 votes again the required number was 51 but even in the second counting nobody has secured this 51 vote again the person who has secured least number of vote, he will be eliminated. So, this time unfortunately, Ritu will be eliminated because uh, one can expect to please just 27 percent of the people and form the government, right. So, you will see all kind of evils popping up, right. What kind of evils that you will see popping up? So, this system does promote communalism. So, it fans communalism hi everyone so this is part two of parliament in the first part if you remember we already have discussed lok sabha rajya sabha why president is part of parliament and thereafter we discussed qualification that is required for a member to be chosen as member of parliament and the last thing that we discussed on what grounds a member under article 102 can be disqualified so all these things we already have discussed let us see what is the plan for this video so in this video we'll discuss these things so we'll discuss that what is the election method that we do have adopted for our lok sabha our, our assembly election right so we do have adopted first past post system then we'll discuss what are the advantages and disadvantages of the first past post system over proportional representation why we have adopted this first past post system in assembly and general election while proportional representation we have uh, adopted for Rajya Sabha election for the election of president for the election of vice president and for the election of upper house in the states right thereafter in the second leg of this chapter or this video we'll discuss oath of member of parliament so once elected what is the content of oath right what oath the member of parliament take and in the third vertical of this video we will discuss situations in which a member of parliament is required to vacate his seats then cases of dual membership so what happens when a sitting member of parliament sitting member of lok sabha is also elected to the rajya sabha or a sitting member of rajya sabha member is also elected to the lok sabha or what happens when a member or a person fights contest election from the two seats of the lok sabha right or what happens when a mla uh, from the state fights the election for the lok sabha seat he wants that seat as well right so these cases are called cases of uh, dual member membership double membership so what will happen which seat he will be allowed to retain and which seat he will be asked to leave right then acts for which elected representative that is member of parliament can be disqualified so in certain situation they are disqualified right so which kind of act in what situation they will be disqualified and in the last leg we do have four five mcqs that i will expect you to solve so let us enter without wasting time let us enter into the first leg of uh, this video and let us discuss what are the election method that is prevalent in India. So, in India we do have two kind of election method that we do have adopted. As far as general election is concerned that is member of parliament from the Lok Sabha. So, for their election we do have adopted first past post system similar for the assembly election as well we had adopted first past post system. For, so, for these two elections that is Lok Sabha and uh, when I say MP, it is MP of Lok Sabha. Just a moment, let me get the pen. So, MP of Lok Sabha, not Rajya Sabha. For the Rajya Sabha, it is different. So, for the member of parliament belonging to the Lok Sabha, we have adopted first pass post system. Then for electing MLA, that is assembly election, right? So, in these two type of election, we do have first pass post system, while we do have something called proportional representation. In proportional representation, there are two types of proportional representation. One is called list system and another is called single transferable system. So, what we have adopted for these people, these constitutional functionary or these officers is proportional representation through single transferable vote, right. So, these constitutional functionary or these two offices, right, 
are elected members of these offices are elected by proportional representation single transferable vote that is president vice president rajya sabha and the states where you have upper house that is legislative council so there are 6 7 states right which have this legislative council as well if you know let me know in the comment section that which all state today after bifurcation of jammu and kashmir right equations of change equations have changed right even andhra pradesh have recommended if i can remember it correctly andhra pradesh has recommended to the center uh, to abolish their upper house so after these two consideration right how many states in india today have which has this upper house or legislative council so let me repeat it that for these four offices or for these two constitutional offices these are two top constitutional functionaries right in a warrant of precedence this he is at number 1 he is at number 2 i hope you remember oh, what is called warrant of precedence right uh, we had already discussed in that vice president uh, chapter right so president and vice president hold a first and second position in that warrant of precedence right and these two houses upper houses are at the central level and upper house at the state level right so these two offices plus these two offices right uh, election to these four offices happens through proportional representation and first so the question that we should be raising is that why is it that first past post system we have adopted for the election of these two people but first past post system has not been adopted for these four offices or if we have adopted proportional representation system uh, through single transferable vote for these four offices why it cannot be applied for the election of these people as well because there are certain advantages and disadvantages associated with both these election method and that's why the first past post system we have or so let us do a comparison rather rather than discussing this here right let us see what is this first past post system right and thereafter we'll discuss what is the proportional representation system thereafter we'll discuss what is this proportional representation through single transferable method and thereafter we'll compare that why what are the advantages and disadvantages associated with this first pass post system due to which we could adopt this system only for the general election right and the assembly election and not for these people right and what is the advantages and disadvantages that are associated with this proportional representation through single transferable method right that we adopted for these four offices so let us get into next slide and let us start discussing what you call uh, first pass post system that we have adopted for uh, electing our member of parliament from lok sabha and assembly election so what happens in uh, what you call first pass post system so in first pass post system you will see that whole of the country is divided into multiple territorial constituency right so we have divided whole of our country for the purpose of general election for the electing lok sabha member into 543 constituency right so the first principle of first pass post system is that whole of the country is divided into territorial constituency right thereafter second principle is that against each territorial constituency there will be number of contestants so say for chandni chowk suppose chandni chowk is a constituency lok sabha constituency in delhi right so against uh, chandni chowk there may be 7 or 8 or 10 depending on again it uh, these numbers will vary uh, depending on the constituency to constituency so in some constituency you will see that 15 people will fight uh, the election in some constituency you will see only four candidates are contesting election right in some constituency this number can go up to 13 20 right so that vary right uh, that that is not fixed there is no bar in representation of people act that for a particular constituency how many people can contest right but one thing that is fixed is that only there will be only one winner right that that is one thing that is fixed so in first past post system whole of the country is divided into multiple territorial constituency and every constituency gets one winner or one representative when we will compare in proportional representation you will see these two things right uh, in proportional representation whole of the country is just one territorial constituency right and in one constituency though there is no representative in one particular constituency but at times you will see see that one area is represented by more than one 
one people, more than two people even, right, depending on the social group or the diversity of that area. So, that is the difference, but that difference we will see on the next slide, right. Here, what I wanted to state is that for Chandni Chowk or for any constituency, there can be n number of contestants that can contest the election. So, suppose five candidates, 15 candidates or suppose five candidates are contesting election uh, for this Chandni Chowk constituency. So, whichever candidate secures maximum of the number, there is nothing called quota system in this first pass post system that you will see in proportional representation system. So, in this system that is first pass post system, just a moment. So, in this system that is first past the post system, there is nothing called quota that unless a candidate has secured this percentage of vote, right, only then he or she will be declared winner. In this system, what you will see is the, that any candidate which secures highest number of vote, right, he or she will be declared winner. So, suppose these six candidates or seven candidates who are contesting election for this Chandni Chowk constituency or for that matter any constituency, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, these seven candidates contest election and in this case you can see that candidate A has secured 27 percent of the vote, candidate B has secured 22 percent of the vote, candidate C has secured, so same manner F and G has been able to secure only 5 percent of the vote. Right. So, as I told that in first pass post system, there is nothing called quota system that unless you have a candidate has been able to secure that quota number of uh, votes, right, then only he will be declared winner, there is nothing that kind, right. So, in this system as I told that any candidate which has secured maximum number of votes, so in this case A has been able to secure maximum percentage of vote or maximum number of vote, he or she will be declared winner, right. So, in this case A will be declared winner. Uh, because he has secured 27 percent. The next candidate B has been able to secure only 22 percent. So, A is clearly the winner in the first pass post system. Now, comes the associated disadvantages. Advantage we saw that it is very easy system. You will get as a candidate, as a voter, what you will get is uh, this kind of list. Just a moment. So, as a voter, what you will get is the, when you will vote, right, anybody of you, if anybody of you if have ever voted right you would have seen this uh, that voting box right so in voting box what you will see is that the candidates photo will be appearing up right party symbols would be there and simply you have to press a button in front of the candidates name right that if i want to uh, my preferable candidate is this i'll press this button so that is the thing so this is very easy method to understand and it is because of this easiness that a voter just need to know the photo of the candidate that he wants to vote for and he can simply press the button in front of that photo, right. So, it is because of this easiness that we are, there are other reasons as well for adopting first past post system for the election of, uh, for the election in general election and assembly election, right. So, it is because of the one reason is that is it, it is very easy. When we will discuss proportional representation through single transferable vote, you will see that every voter is given a slip, right. In slip, uh, there are names of the candidate, not the photo and against each candidate that you want to vote for, you will have to assign the priority 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right, depending on the number of candidates that are running for that particular office. So, you will see that in that kind of voting system that is proportional representation through single transferable vote, a voter need to know uh, need to understand this numerical knowledge, he or she needs to have this numerical knowledge, right. At the time of independence, most of the our people, most of the we had adopted this universal adult franchise, where we had extended voting rights to everyone, irrespective of the education he or she had, right, irrespective of caste, creed, right. So, we could not have gone for proportional representation through single transferable vote because here you will see that numerical knowledge is very necessary and our masses were not educated, right. Who, uh, who are the voters in this uh, general election and assembly election? All the masses, all the people, right. And that is why, right, we have adopted for first past post system which is very 
easy method so one advantage we already have seen of this first po past post system and one reason as well we have seen that why we have adopted uh, this first past post system let us see few disadvantages of this first past post system now come to this uh, data right so here you saw that only by securing 27 percent of the vote and in some constituency this number may cross like 30 percent or 31 percent of the vote right so suppose let us not take this data let us take that okay this candidate in another constituency another candidate had to secure 31 percent of the vote right and only then he was able to secure so if a candidate already knows that just by securing 31 percent of the vote I would be able to secure that seat, right? Here in this case, only 27% of the people, right? So for candidate A, right, these people, these 22% people, this 21% of the people, this 12% uh, of the people, right? So ultimately, 73% of the people either voted against candidate A, right? So this is the vote share of candidate A, right? So only these people, this 27% of the people, has voted for him while rest of 73% of the people have either voted against him or not voted for him, right? Although ideally it is said that once you are part of government or once you have been elected representative of a constituency, either you are MLA or MP, you are not a representative or you are not MLA or MP of this 27% alone you will be representing whole of the 100 percent. But th that is the ideal statement, that is the ideal expectation. That does not happen today in politics, right? So if a candidate does know that just by securing 27 percent of the vote or 31 percent of the vote in some constituency, I would be able to secure the vote, right? Why he will concentrate on 100 percent of the people? Because concentrating on 100 percent of the people requires cost, right? It has financial cost. It does have time cost it have other cost at associated with it right so he will con uh, concentrate this time he was able to secure just 27 percent and secure the seat next time for the next election he does know that yes there may be some amount of anti incumbency so let me target not 27 percent but let me target for 35 percent considering that some people some of my voter may be distrungled may not be satisfied so next time he'll target so for the next time he'll target this 35 percent and he'll work for that 35 percent he'll do development work he'll do policy work only for this 35 percent of the world eh? so that is one disadvantage and that's why you will see that on india level you have a few mp in hyderabad you have few parties in up you have few party in uh, west bengal you have means there are many mainstream party level on this bjp and congress right there are mainstream party at the regional level who target a particular caste or target a particular religion just because that know they know that this caste this particular social group is uh, 22 percent or 21 percent or 15 percent of the vote bank and just by securing that 15 or 6 17 percent of the vote bank and uh, few percentage from here and there we would be able to manage the state or we would be able to get number of seats required to form government at the state level they do target that particular two or three caste right you do have various parties in up i don't want to name it right which targets particular time whenever they form the government in administration as well they do secure that caste groups entry right and I am not talking only about UP this happens in the West Bengal this happens in the Odisha this happens in the Bihar you do have people in Andhra Pradesh which target particular social group particular caste particular religion following this principle this first so that is one disadvantage of first past post system because uh, one can expect to please just 27 percent of the people and form the government right so you will see all kind of evils popping up right what kind of evils that you will see popping up so this system does promote communalism so it fans communalism so if i know that just by pleasing one community just by pleasing christian community suppose if as a mla if i am contesting for the mla and my constituency has huge chunk of christian population or muslim population so if i know that just by polarizing this christian community i can get my seat secured 
right why i'll uh, communicate with other community unless i am a idealist unless i am a constitutionalist but that is a rare breed right uh, in today's time being a constitutionalist being a idealist cannot can never enter into politics right so you do have practical people in politics and practical the meaning of practical you already know so the system you saw that this system uh, fans communalism second point it perpetuates casteism so in up in bihar you would have seen that people do vote on the caste lines right and that's why there are caste specific parties there is two parties in uh, up which per targets particular type of caste right when madam is there i cannot name it right again there is father son duo which targets particular type of caste right there after third point if it fuels regionalism how it fuels regionalism how first past post system fuels regionalism let us see it so to respond this question that this system first past post system fuels regionalism let us raise a question and the question is that how many pms do we have from southern state so except pv narsimha rao and hd devgoda how many pms that you can remember except these two or three pms most of the pm we do have in our country has belonged to starting from jawaharlal nehru starting from this lal bahadur shastri indira gandhi charan singh moraji desai narendra modi manmohan singh all these people have belonged to northern states so most of the pm why because they do know politician or political party does know that just by managing these three four states in hindi heartland they would be able to get that magic number magic number or the lok sabha election to form the government is this so just by managing just by polarizing votes in these five or six in the heartland jammu jammu and kashmir himachal pradesh punjab haryana up bihar rajasthan madhya pradesh chatisgarh so just by managing these six or seven state they would be able a party would be able to get this seat right and if seat falls back it right one party one regional party they have to manage from south right and they would be able to get this manage uh, this number and that's why you will see that there is a sense of alienation in this southern state if you visit you will see that huge uh, anger against language if you see anger against hindi or this punjabi culture or northern indian culture here it is because of this political reason as well and that's why i have put up that it fuels regionalism as well why do you think means modi had fought from varanasi in 2014 election while gujarat was the safe seat right a varodara seat he had opted for two seats one was varodara and another was varanasi what was the reason he was not a leader of up he fought from the varanasi only to polarize this hindi heartland because by varanasi he could polarize votes in up as well and bihar as well right and he knew that just by managing these two three states right he would be able his party can get 80 or 70 additional seats 70 80 additional seats that's why he went to flew to varanasi so this is what this is taking advantage of first past post system because we, we know you know as a contestant that i have just to get means i have no quota right i have just to get maximum number of seats or maximum percentage that's all so these are few advantages it is anti minority how many muslim mps we do have in lok sabha how many christian mp would, what is the percentage of muslim in india 18 19% right can you count how many uh, muslim member we do have in lok sabha so this is why i am calling that this fans communalism you pit a caste group a religious group against another just to get just to secure the votes so it fans communalism it fans casteism it fuels regionalism it is anti minority to some extent right and so these are the disadvantages of first pass post system right and just because it is easy first pass post system and for a country when we'll discuss uh, proportional representation you will see that proportional re representation despite having multiple advantages cannot be implemented in uh, huge countries like india you will see that right so it is because of this one advantage and another compulsion that in size of country of india right this uh, proportional representation cannot be implemented and that's why first post post system has been adopted in general election just a moment 
general election i hope you know the meaning of general election so election for choosing mps of lok sabha right that is called general election and for the assembly election right these two we have adopted first pass post system so i hope first pass post system advantages and disadvantages you would have understood let us move to the next slide and let us discuss the proportional representation system so as i already told that first pass post system you just need to secure highest number of votes here or highest number of vote among other candidates right and you would be declared winner but that does not happen in proportional representation system in proportional representation system depending on number of contested there would be something called quota right so that quota can be at time 34% as well at times it can be 51% as well right in presidential election we do have quota of 50% of the vote plus 1 right in uh, presidential election we do follow proportional representation through single transferable vote so there a candidate who want to uh, be winner right who want to get into office he will have to get this number of seat in rajya sabha election this calculation changes so the key word is that in proportional representation a quota is already decided depending on the number of contested that are running for that office and unless a candidate secures that quota right he or she will not be declared winner right so in president office unless a candidate secures for the president office unless a, sec a candidate secure 51% of the sorry 50% plus one vote right he or she will not be declared so this system is more acceptable to more people right it it, it is more representative right because a candidate who is able to secure this number right he will be more acceptable to the candidate which is just securing 27% mind you even i have seen the cases where a candidate has been able to secure 15% and he was declared winner in first past post system just because the contestants number of contestants were very high right so in this example i have taken just seven contestant there may be constituency where 20 candidates are contesting so votes will be divided right so one candidate which has secured just 15% right so would he be more acceptable or in this case the candidate would be more acceptable because in this case a quota has already been decided so the candidate elected through this process will be more acceptable to every group than the candidate who has been elected by first pass post system because in first pass post system a candidate can secure a seat just by 15% just because the number of contestants were high you were not popular you won not because you were popular or you are acceptable to all the groups you won because more number of candidates were fighting in that election and this is actually a ploy that is used by many political parties in india and not only in india wherever this first pass post system so just to divide the candidates some candidates just to divide the votes in the caste or religious group they will create the dummy candidate right i'll not get into the details right there is something called concept of dummy candidate and they file nomination just to divide vote of a particular caste so that a other possible candidate should not win and that does happen so i hope this concept of first pass post system and proportional proportional representation don't worry we are going to discuss in detail right uh, this is just basic explanation right so let us delve little deeper and let us take a, to understand this proportional representation system let us take a example of israel so in israel the national assembly has a uh, national assembly is called knesset knesset sorry right it does have 120 seats national assembly right so what happens in israel they have adopted for something called proportional representation system so in proportional representation system whole of the country will not be divided into territorial constituency as we saw in first passport system our country had been divided india had been divided into 543 territorial constituency this will not happen in case of israel in israel whole of the country whichever country is adopting proportional representation system whole of the country will be considered just as one constituency so every party will file so every party in this case can give a list of 120 candidates thereafter voting will happen 
here in the voting people means electors vote voters vote not for the candidate but for the party right so here whole country is single so here whole country is single electoral constituency neset has this uh, 120 seats every party declares 120 candidates but voter when they are voting they are participating in voting they do not vote for the candidates as in our case on that electoral ballot we do have the candidates name right but in this case uh, there will be just party name and voters will vote for the party now depending on which party has secured what percentage of the vote this number of seats this number of seats will be given to that party right so suppose party a has secured 40% of the votes right so 40% of the 120 seats will go to party a if party b has secured 10% of the vote right so 10% of the 120 will go to party b if party c has secured just 5% of the vote so 5% of the 120 seats will go to party c party d has secured 20% of the vote so 20% of the 120 vote will uh, seats will go to party d so it is called proportional representation because every party so if there is a party which is representing a particular social group uh, which has just uh, 7 or 8% of the population so even that group can expect their representation in the national assembly right that may not happen in india which has adopted for first past post system right that a social group which is just 7% of the vote uh, 7% of the electorate right they may not expect this group may not expect 7% representation in our national assembly in our parliament right so that is one biggest advantage of proportional representation while discussing the disadvantage of what you call uh, first past post system we had described one word that it is anti minority although this strong word like this is anti minority these strong words should never be used in interview or the means right you can touch so you can use the diplomatic language to explain the same thing right here just to make you understand many a times i do take political examples right i do refer to the party i do target their ideology but that is just to explain you right the rider that you need to always place on you that these kind of political examples should not get into your main senses right so you need to wise uh, while uh, writing answers in the main or in interview right don't make your mindset political don't be biased because at the end of day you have to join the government and you will have to work for them so now let us move to the next slide and let us discuss proportional representation that we already have discussed with single transferable vote right so in the previous slide if you remember we had discussed that proportional representation primarily have this two types that is list system and second was this single transferable method because we have not adopted this list system for any of our election prevalent in india we had adopted the single transferable so let us have our focus on this single transferable voting right so here you do have two additional word along with proportional representation let us understand the meaning of this single and transferable so meaning of single is that every electorate every voter has the value of vote of every electorate is one and why it needs to be emphasized it should not have means every person in democracy needs to have only one vote so why what is the necessity of expressing this single word here so the point when you will see that the person the electorate when he gets what you call slip right although i should not have shown it here right so you will see that electorate is asked to declare the preferences right and you might argue that just because a electorate is getting to a uh, point preferences right the value of vote cannot be one right he is getting more than one vote one electorate or one voter are voting for number of people and that's why the value of vote is not one right and that's why it needs to be emphasized it needed to be emphasized that no the value of vote even in this case 
is one for one voter what is the meaning of transferable so in certain situation you will see that the vote of one candidate the vote of one voter will be transferred to another candidate and that's why means we'll understand the deeper meaning of these things we'll understand but just basic understanding i hope you would have developed that what is the meaning of single and what is the meaning of transferable so each electorate gets one vote like first past post system but their votes are transferable how let us see so here in the proportional representation through single transferable vote here we have taken example of a presidential vote so suppose there are these five people himalaya raj ritu nehra anushka tiwari navneet sharma and upsc note actually these people are our subscribers so five people i have randomly chooses right chosen right so these five people suppose want to run for the office of president right in presidential election what happens that at any candidate because we have adopted first past post system with single transferable vote so i already have explained you in the previous slide that in this kind of system there is something called quota right so a candidate who want to get elected to this office through this method must need to secure 50% of the vote plus 1 to be able to enter into this office right that is the quota that a candidate needs to cross so for convenience of calculation what i have done is that already we know that who are the electorate who do participate in presidential election can we repeat it so all the elected member elected member of ls all elected member of rs then assembly people also participate right so these are the electorate but for sake of convenience what i have done is that i have taken 100 electorate although in his election there would be more than 4800 including all the mlas and mp right so more than 4800 electorates do participate but for the sake of convenience of the calculation what i have done is that i have taken just 100 electorates right so he is electorate 1 he is electorate 2 just a moment electorate 2 he is electorate 3 and he is electorate 100 right so suppose for the election of president these 100 electorates are participating these are who uh, these are the people who are running for the office and these are the people who are the voters so voters every voter will be given uh, this kind of slip right priority will not have been uh, defined here i have put up the priority as well so the slip that they'll get initially it will not have this priority these numbers will not be there what this candidate these electorates will be asked is to do is that depending on their preference right so suppose these are the candidates for electorate one electorate one think that from his assessment anushka tiwari is most fit candidate to be able to run the president office so what this electorate will do is that she will give priority one to anushka tiwari now if she think that okay maybe that anushka if what happens that if anushka tiwari does not win so from his assessment himalaya raj is the second most fit candidate then if you think that okay again even if these two candidate does not secure the win then he may give the third preference to upsc note that he he has one vote only but his vote can be transferred in case these candidate does not win and that is the meaning of this transferability his vote is one but in the situation when he has given first priority vote to a person if she or he could not win his vote will be transferred to another person that is the meaning of this transferability what electorate do uh, two will do is electorate two similarly will give priority so from his assessment himalaya raj is the most fit candidate then anushka tiwari is second most fit candidate so similarly every can every voter will define the priority in the list in the slip that has been given to him or her right thereafter after defining the priority it will be given it will be given to the presiding officer or the secretary general whosoever is presiding uh, what you call this voting system now the counting will start right so any candidate as i already told you that any candidate who want to run in the office who want to be declared winner he or she must get 50% plus one seat so in this case we do have 100 voters right so 50% of the 100 will be 50 vote plus one vote right so any candidate out of these five if has secured 51 vote 
right he will be declared winner but it is not practically possible it may be means there are chances that a particular candidate he is more popular he, or he or she is more uh, acceptable to every party he may get uh, this 51 seat but practically that does not happen right so to tackle that situation what system we have created is that we have created stages of counting right so suppose the first in the first counting in the first stage the number of votes were counted right so anushka tiwari was the first priority for 30 voters upsc notes was the first priority for 21 what is this first priority means first priority electorate one had given first priority to anushka tiwari then electorate suppose five would have given uh, first priority to anushka tiwari right then electorate suppose 47th would have means seven uh, hundred electorates we do have so electorate 47th would have given suppose first priority to anushka tiwari so similarly the first priority vote in the first stage will be counted first priority vote of all the hundred voters would be counted so suppose 30 people have thought that anushka tiwari is the most fit candidate and they made anushka as the first priority candidate upsc notes 21 people voted as the first priority Ritu secured 60 first priority vote in the first counting then 12 voters thought that Navneet is the most fit candidate and so they gave first priority to the Navneet and 21 people thought that Himalaya Raj is the most fit candidate now what was the required number to get into uh, president office 51 here you see no person neither anushka nor upsc not nor ritu nor himalaya Raj, nor navneet has secured this number what will happen so in this case the person who has secured least number of vote he'll be dropped in he'll be eliminated right so in stage one you do have these five candidates so who has secured least number of vote so this person 12 navneet has secured least number of vote right so for the second stage he'll be eliminated so this was navneet who had secured this 12 number right he'll be eliminated and his votes means 12 people who had voted for him right their their 12 voter slip will be observed and their second priority vote right so the person who had chosen navneet as number one means 12 people their second priority vote right so electorate one had given uh, second priority to Himalaya Raj. Similarly, whosoever people had voted for the Navneet, right, they would also have given their uh, second priority there to someone. So, these 12 voters, second priority vote will be seen. This person, Navneet has been dropped, but these 12 voters, second priority vote will be seen that who they had voted, who they had given, which candidate they had given their second priority, right? And the second priority vote will be transferred to other four candidates, right? And now votes will be again counted. So numbers tally has improved. Anushka, which has secured uh, 30 votes in the first stage of the counting, she has secured 32 candidates, uh, 32 votes. 29 votes UPSC notes, Ritu 17 votes and Himalaya Raj 22 votes. Again the required number was 51 but even in the second counting nobody has secured this 51 vote. Again the person who has secured least number of vote he will be eliminated. So this time unfortunately Ritu will be eliminated because she has secured only 17 votes right without offense to the Ritu right and without offense to the navni right she will be eliminated this time so 17 voters 17 voters which had given second priority to ritu their vote means this 17 vote will be transferred to other candidates right the way we had done previously now in this case again in stage three votes will be counted so suppose tally now is in the third counting after eliminating ritu that tally is 40 33 and these two people because has been eliminated for this round right 27 so this is the tally still nobody has secured 51 so one person again from this stage again has to be eliminated so this time himalaya will be eliminated and this 27 vote will be transferred to these two people right and now the tally is in stage four of the counting the tally is what you call 47 and 53 just a moment this pen seems not to be working so now the tally is 
47 and 53. So, one candidate that is UPSC node has been able to get this number. So, in this stage after the fourth counting this person that is UPSC nodes will be declared winner. So, this is the meaning of what you call uh, proportional representation through single transferable vote that unless a person gets that quota that crosses that quota number of vote he or she will not be elected to the office. Uh, the value of vote of every candidate is single, but in certain situation that vote will keep transferring, right. So, I hope the meaning of all these things you already have understood. Let us do a comparison of these two system and let us see why India chose first past post system for the general that is central election for the Lok Sabha election and assembly election. So, first past post system we already have seen that it can promote majoritarianism, right. Uh, currently ruling party is often accused for promoting this majoritarianism, right. Then every community in proportional representation system, we already saw that how Arabites in Israel method, right, how they had also got uh, representation. So, every community party group receives equal, re not equal representation, but proportional representation. So, this would be corrected, right, proportional representation in proportion to the vote that they have receive right election method is very easy to understand because you have to just identify the photo and you have to press the button in this method voter needs to be elect ele, sorry literate right so in this method that uh, you need to have a basic numerical knowledge right and that's why voters needs to be literate and that was a major hurdle that we chose first pass post system as far as this general and assembly election as far as other election that is Rajya Sabha election for the presidential election for uh, vice presidential because voters in that case are MLAs and MPs right. So, from these people some amount of literacy can be expected and that is why we adopted for the Rajya Sabha for the legislative for the president and vice president this proportional representation because here you need some amount of literacy, some amount of numerical knowledge is necessary, but in masses this was absent during independence movement and that is why for the general assembly election we had adopted first past post system. So, I hope uh, these two points first and second is clear. In the third thing country is divided into territorial constituency, here entire country is a single constituency we already have seen one constituency one representative here you will not notice this right uh, generally constituency does not have representatives but if any country changes the system and if country uh, that constituencies are given representatives you may find that in particular one constituency there may be more than one uh, representative depending on the number of social group or caste group of, or communal group or racial group that uh, territorial constituency has right. Voter votes for a candidate plus party. So, in our first pass post system although people should be voting only for candidate, but we do have party loyalties as well right as a voter we do vote for the part sometime we tend to ignore the candidate which is uh, standing uh, in the election for the MLA or MP, but we vote for the party as well. So, in this case first pass post system although primarily we should be voting for the candidate, but we do vote for candidate plus party, but in this case name of the candidate on the ballot box won't pop up right. So, what you will be as a voter you will be voting for the party and not for the candidate ultimately they will decide this party will decide that who will be their candidate after the winning. So, if they have secured suppose 40 seat any party right. So, it will be their uh, discretion that which 40 people although generally what happens. So, every party in the Israel uh, declares 120 candidates. So, suppose one party has secured 40 uh, what you call seats. So, the first 40 people after that 120 people will reach to Neset that is their national assembly right. So, that is the system that they do follow every party declare that 120 seats uh, 120 people right and depending on the number of seats that they do have got right. So, the first 30 people or first 40 people whatever seats that they do have got first 40 people reaches to their national assembly. Next point seat 1 are not in proportion to the vote received right. So, you would have seen that in first 2014 NDA has secured just 31 or 32 percent of the uh, votes, but they were able to manage this number alone BJP had I guess this number if I am not correct 
right this time uh, nda alliance had secured 38% of the vote right and they have been able to manage this number of seat 336 seats right so more than 50% of the seat even in first term got they got right despite receiving 31 or 32% of the vote and that's the point that seats won are not per means 50 per more than 50% of the vote uh, sorry seats they got while the number of votes that they had got was only 32 percent. So, that is seats won are not in proportion of the votes they have received. Each party gets here in this proportional representation system, each party gets seats in proportion of the votes that they have received. So, Israel example we had saw right. So, 40 percent of the vote, 40 percent of the representation in national assembly. So, we have adopted this first pass post system. Uh, in general assembly, uh, general election and assembly election. While uh, proportional representation through single transferable vote we had adopted in two houses, two upper houses of the uh, national level and state level that is Rajya Sabha and Legislative Council and two top offices, top constitutional offices that is president and vice president. So, I hope the comparison between first pass post system, what is the advantage, what is the disadvantage associated with first pass post system, which election we have adopted first pass post system and in which offices we have adopted this proportional representation through single transferable vote, right. So, we already have seen the advantages and disadvantages and why, right. Let us move to the next slide and let us discuss oath of the member of parliament. So, even before discussing oath of a member of parliament, let us first discuss that what oath a person has to take if a person wants to get chosen as a member of parliament means he has not been chosen right now, he just is filing the nomination. So, at time of filing the nomination, this is the oath that that person uh, who wants to fight the election he ha he or she has to take. So, to bear true faith and allegiance to the constitution and to uphold sovereignty S and I sovereignty and integrity of India. So, this is the oath that is prescribed by election commission of India and this is the oath he or she has to take. Now, suppose a person has been whosoever won the election right now he has been declared winner. So, one additional content will be added this oath he had already taken right. So, this will remain part of his new oath along with that there will be one new line and that new line would be to faithfully discharge the duties of the office. Now, since he has been declared earlier he had taken this oath now since he has been declared winner right he is entering into the office of elected representative he is entering into office of member of parliament. So, this additional oath again means along with these two right this third oath as well he will have to take that I will faithfully discharge the office the duties of the office that I am entering into. So, this is the content of oath. Now, the question arises that who administered oath of this member of parliament speaker obvious answer would be the answer is no not speaker, but in constitution it has been mentioned that it is the president who will administer oath to the member of parliament or any person appointed on his behalf. So, oath of MP has to be administered by president or any person appointed by on his befa behalf right. So, generally president does appoint pro term speaker we will discuss what is the meaning of pro term speaker as of now just take that pro term speaker is the senior most member senior most member of parliament. So, uh, immediately before constitution of first sitting of Lok Sabha right this pro term speaker is appointed by the president and it is this pro term speaker who will administer oath to all the member of parliament meant right. There is one more provision that unless member of parliament does administer this oath right the oath the content of the oath right they cannot participate in the parliamentary proceeding committees proceeding and if consciously or if knowingly that I uh, have not subscribed to this oath they do try to participate into the proceeding of parliament or committee they will be fined they can be fined. So, there is some material fine that is very less like 500 right. So, they will be fined on the uh, 500 per sitting of the house or the committee. So, that is a very meager amount. So, MP elect I hope you know the meaning of MP elect there is something called MP elect then something called PM elect. 
so once it has been finalized that okay once the results has been declared and uh, the presiding officer of the district has declared that that uh, candidate a has been winner so at that moment only that person will become mp elect right that person a who has been declared winner by the dm of that city who happens to be returning officer so as soon returning officers announce that this person for this general election is the winner for this constituency he will be called mp elect right and as soon he takes this oath right then he will become uh, MP member of parliament similarly uh, you are you would have heard this PM elect and PM so as soon a party which has clear majority right so as soon that party decides their leader of the house that person will be called PM elect right so you would have uh, heard in media circles right PM elect Modi so as soon Modi was announced Modi means BJP declared that for the Lok Sabha he will be our leader and because BJP had majority in the house as well right so we uh, his designation at that moment become pm elect right and from pm elect he will become pm as soon he has taken that oath of secrecy and oath of office the two oath that uh, what you call union ministers or cabinet minister has to take so i hope these things would have been clear to you right the learning here is that president or any person appointed by him so generally it is the pro term speaker who administer oath to the member of parliament right and unless member of parliament elect has taken oath has been administered oath he cannot or should not participate into the parliamentary uh, proceeding or committee proceedings right if he does participate and until then until uh, he has taken the oath he will not be subjected to any kind of immunity so there are certain immunities certain privileges right under article 105 right that these people as an individual mp and house also does have means there are two kind of privileges uh, privileges of house right we'll discuss in the last section of uh, what you call this parliament there is something called privileges right so we'll deal so there are two kind of privileges how, uh, how privileges of whole house and privileges of individual members right that has been dealt in article 105 we'll study that right so unless this person any person mp elect has taken oath to the member of parliament's office he will not have these kind of immunity or privileges that member of parliament at the individual level is supposed to enjoy so i hope oath of the member of parliament you would have understood let us move to the situation in which in certain situation member of parliament will have to vacate his or her seat so what are those situations so here on this slide we'll discuss the situation in very short and thereafter we'll pick up one by one uh, all those situation one by one and we'll discuss that in all what all situation a person a member of parliament is required to vacate his seat so let us discuss the first situation so in first situation see as soon a member of parliament is elected he has been he or she has been declared winner by the presiding or returning officer right uh, other candidates if they feel that uh, this winner has indulged in any kind of corruption or any kind of malpractices there is a tool called election petition election petition so other candidate who could not win and if they believe right they do have substantial proof that this winner has indulged into some kind of malpractice some kind of influence or intimidation of voter they can use this tool called election petition they can go to the concerned high court and they can file this election petition so in that case if uh, high court finds that whatever allegation had been leveled by opposition party or opposition member were true then election can be declared void right other another situation is that if a member of parliament is elected to the president office or governor office so in all these situations member of parliament will have to vacate office means if he assumes president office or if he assumes governor's office so he cannot remain he cannot continue and two offices right so in all these situation either hc high court declares his election void on this election petitions or if he joins office of president or office of governor through election so in all these situation he will have to vacate member of parliament's 
of a second situation so in second situation suppose if he has been subjected to any of the ground that is mentioned in article 102 so article 102 gives us grounds on which member of parliament can be disqualified so there were number of ground if you remember right we'll discuss in subsequent slide in detail so there were number grounds and we already have discussed in in previous video so if any member has been subjected to all those disqualification parameter mentioned in article 102 then that member will have to vacate his office then uh, the third situation is that if a member has been subjected to the anti defection parameters then again he will have to vacate the office if speaker or chairman has declared his him or her defector this situation so if a person has resigned from his office then again he will have to vacate the office this in this case it is not a force vacation but it is a willing vacation right because he himself has resigned right then due to long absence so if any member of parliament continuously remain absent from his office for 60 long days without information then again the house may order that person ki aapka seat jo hai vacate karna padega then if a uh, member has been subjected to dual membership what is this dual membership so if sitting member of lok sabha if he contest election of rajya sabha and if he gets elected so he cannot hold both the offices he cannot be a lok sabha member as well he cannot be rajya sabha member as well or if a member chooses to contest from two lok sabha seats uh, from both lok sabha seats he wins so again he cannot retain both the seats of the lok sabha so these are the situation which are called double membership so in all those uh, situation there is elaborate constitutional provision right so we'll see so now let us move to the next uh, slide and let us discuss all these points one by one right so if high court declares a person's election null and void so in that case so there is something called election petition we already discussed this in previous slide right so within 45 days of declaration of election 45 days just a moment so once election result has been declared returning officer has declared the winner and if opposition candidate or any candidate finds that the person who has been declared winner if he has uh, on the date of election if that candidate was not qualified so there are certain qualification parameter discussed in article 84 we had discussed already in uh, what you call previous video right there were certain means he should be citizen he should be of certain age suppose if he has to be elected to Rajya Sabha then 25 years if he has to be elected to Lok Sabha then 30 years then he should be registered voter in any part so all these things we had discussed in the previous video under article 84 and under representation of people act as well there are certain uh, qualification that has been mentioned for a member who is wants to fight the election right so if on the date of election he declares in nomination file he declares that yes i am qualified i am of 25 he produced first certificate and on the basis of those first certificate first birth certificate to prove his age to prove his citizenship right he produces those first certificate and he secures uh, what you call the office of member of parliament now opposition members comes to know that that whatever age certificate or whatever voting uh, certificate that he has produced those were first so they can use this tool called election petition and they can drag that person uh, that winner uh, their election his election can be challenged within 45 days in the high court which high court so high court in which the member of parliament has fought the election so suppose that member of parliament belongs to ambala ambala is a district in haryana so high court of uh, haryana is in chandigarh right so in chandigarh that election petition will be filed so suppose a person that mp belongs to allahabad allahabad is in up right so in allahabad high court right up court is in allahabad not in lucknow so in allahabad high court the election petition will be filed right what could be the another ground so second ground is that if that person has indulged in some kind of corrupt practices either he has directly indulged or any of his booth agent or election agent has involved if they have been indulged in any kind of intimidation of voter if on material parameter they have influenced the choices of voter right if they have bribed a voter so in all those situation all those will come into that category of corrupt practices and if opposition member is able to prove these point that MPs election will be declared void another nomination paper of any other candidate was improperly rejected 
you would have seen the cases that at political and administrative collusion nomination paper of many candidates are rejected because of this political and administrative collusion right because of small small reasons somebody has not put up the dot somebody could not furnish the information some small errors right so if a candidate's uh, nomination papers right was improperly rejected and if that allegation is proved in the election petition in the high court right means a person did not miss he could fight the election but he did not because of the rejection of the nomination paper by the returning officer because of politico administrative collusion this person could not get the chance to fight the election right so even in that case the election can be declared void right so this was the third reason and the fourth reason is that if the result was materially affected right so recently you had member of legislative assembly of gujarat he was law minister and he just five or six days ago gujarat senior minister gujarat high court voids election win of senior bjp minister citing mal practices so in this case what had happened actually so uh, in the first counting this law minister was not declared winner there was a member from uh, congress he was had been declared winner but then as the same word that is politico administrative collusion because bjp was in ruling party in the previous term as well so there was some administrative connection returning officer uh, ordered for the second round of counting and in second counting uh, this law minister was declared winner by a margin of 3 just 360 vote now his candidature the gujarat law minister candidature was challenged in high court and just six days ago his candidature has been cancelled by the gujarat high court so i hope the grounds on which a high court can declare a election void is clear to you so all these four grounds and practical example i already gave you right although that example belong to the state but similar thing happens at the central level because what we are following is parliamentary form of government so whatever uh, happens at the central level are duplicated on the state level as well then if a member has been elected to the president vice president or the governor office then as well he will have to he or she will have to vacate the seat so here we do have three learning the first learning is that there is some tool called election petition then election petition can be filed in high court high court does have original jurisdiction right so which high court high court to which member of parliament belongs to so if member of parliament has belonged to telangana right then the petition will be filed in hyderabad high court right if member of parliament belongs to tamil nadu then in chennai high court this election petition will be filed right election petition needs to be filed within 45 days right and then last thing is that grounds on which election petition can be filed right so i hope all these things all this situation you would have understood let us move to the next slide and let us discuss another point that is disqualification disqualification due to anti defection or article 102 so let us move to the next slide so article 102 we already have discussed right so under article 102 there are certain grounds on which member of parliament can be so, so if he is holding office of profit if he is of unsound mind if he ceases to be citizen of india or if he has become undischarged so all these explanation we had in our first video so i am not explaining all these things so the first situation was that if any member of parliament has become subject to any of the ground mentioned in article 102 or representation of people act if he has been subject to any of the election offenses if he has been sentenced to more than two years if he has uh, promoted social levels like uh, dory or untouchability if he is fueling enmity between two religious groups so all these reasons if we do have any kind of interest in uh, government contract so all these reasons can be ground for disqualifying a member of parliament and in that case member of parliament will have to vacate his seat all these things we have studied in the first video in very detail right we have spent substantial amount of time there and that's why i'm not another situation if any member of parliament has been subjected to schedule 10 that deals with anti-defection anti-defection we do have dedicated chapter in case of anti-defection who takes the decision if a member has been subject to anti-defection or not so it is the 
head of the house right so in rajya in lok sabha you do have speaker who takes the decision whether a member has been subjected to anti defection or not and in rajya sabha it is the chairman who is deciding authority again here uh, in the anti defection chapter we'll have a detailed discussion so in this situation as well member of parliament will have to vacate his house the third situation is if any member of parliament has willingly mind you willingly extended his resignation so resignation he could tender by writing letter to president no he will write letter to speaker or the chairman means head of the house he or she belongs to so a lok sabha member of parliament can write his letter uh, write letter of resignation expressing his desire to resign right and a rajya sabha member will write letter to the chairman but there is a catch catch is that if speaker and chairman finds that the letter of resignation that is being tendered by member of parliament in in any way under coercion or if that is not genuine or if that is not voluntary is under coercion if it is not genuine so suppose if you have uh, sent your resignation letter through the post now anybody can uh, do that right i can fudge any of member of parliament signature i can have the stamp i can write letter on the behalf of any member of parliament and can post it to speaker right so if speaker does have sufficient reason if in his assessment now uh, i can kidnap suppose again this is a crime i should not be example uh, using my example if suppose i kidnap any of the member of parliament and if i force him at the gun point that you write your resignation letter once he has written the letter i'll post it to speaker or the chairman whichever house he belongs to right and in speaker or chairman's assessment if he finds that it is because of the coercion right so he can take the call and not accept the resignation letter this has happened actually right and to elaborate this i will again take states example so recently not recently actually in 2019 there was a government change in karnataka at the state level uh, earlier congress and jds was ruling uh, thereafter right now you have bjp ruled state right this is europa government is ruling so when government change government change was not natural it was a forced change so few of the mla of jds and congress switched side to the uh, this bjp and they wrote resignation their mla's wrote letter to the speaker their resignation letter to the speaker while they were residing in a hotel which was perceived to be under control of bjp so in this situation the speaker refused using this very ground that Uh, from my assessment from my wisdom the letter that has been so you had this resort politics going on in mp election uh, sorry in mp government change when congress changed to bjp right so in mp election as well you would have seen that resort politics and this has become a new normal so this resort politics had went into karnataka as well and he said this he was the speaker and he said that i am exercising my own wisdom and from my assessment unless because they are sending letters from a bjp controlled hotel because they were residing in a uh, bjp ruled state right so from my assumption they are under duress whatever letters that they are writing they may be under coercion so what i want is that they should come to me personally and they should write that letter in front of me then only i'll consider that the le- their letter is genuine their letter is voluntary and those mlas actually approach supreme court saying that this speaker is acting in a biased manner he should have accepted because we are continuously releasing the videos as well that the resignation letter we have sent to you is voluntarily is genuine we have written we are under no coercion we are under no duress right so you should accept our resignation but supreme court took the side of speaker itself calling that it is the speaker's prerogative right in case of rajya sabha uh, rajya uh, chairman does have that prerogative and in case of, of speaker in case of lok sabha speaker does have this prerogative and at the assembly level again speaker does have prerogative that in his assessment if resignation is involuntarily or in not genuine in that case he can refuse to accept the resignation and this happens at the central level as well and the state level as well right so this concept we have understood that if 
member resigns from his office then he'll have to vacate his office member does have right to withdraw his her resignation until the head of the house that is chairman in case of rajya sabha and speaker in case of lok sabha accepts the resignation so he can means if as a member of parliament if you have tendered the resignation you have that option that unless that resignation has been considered by speaker or chairman whatever the case be right you can withdraw your resignation letter so i hope this point we already have understood let us move to the next point that is long absence right so if a member of parliament without information to the head of house that is speaker or uh, chairman remains absent for more than 60 days then speaker does have right to ask that member to vacate the house stop not speaker or chairman right it is the house right and this is how you should subject your mind to so these questions are very confusing speaker writes his resignation letter to right he, can he write to president can he write to vice president can he write to deputy speaker so boggle your mind right put up all the options in front of uh, you right and thereafter see that okay which will be the most suitable why not this why not this if this is the answer why not this if this is the answer why not this this is how you should train your mind right i could have ignored this i could not have put up the speaker and chairman i could have simply managed by putting this house right but why did because in prelims question this may also be an option and if you have not boggled your mind if you have not trained your mind you will there is chances that you will make the mistake right so in case if mp uh, is absent from the house for longer period of time 60 days not the speaker although it should have been natural choice that speaker should have right chairman should have right to suspend if any member without information is remaining absent for more than speaker should have right right chairman should have right but this right has been extended to house right speaker should not have extraordinary power chairman should not have extraordinary power and that's why a motion will be moved in house if motion is approved then only that member will be asked to vacate his seat right while counting this period of 60 days period of recess what is this recess so recess is difference between so right now the budget session is over budget session lok sabha is prorogued right now and rajya sabha is also prorogued i hope you do know the difference between uh, prorogue right next time for the wind uh, sorry sir for the monsoon session when the lok sabha is recalled right so what is the differ whatever the difference between number of days between this prorogation of lok sabha and then again summoning of this lok sabha so suppose 240 days sorry uh 80 days or 140 days right whatever the difference that will that period will be called recess so while counting this 60 days period of recess will not be counted right so while counting the 60 days you can't uh, count like okay in the previous session in the budget session a member had remained for absent for 20 days and 40 days hence he'll complete that 60 days period and let us suspend him let us disqualify him it can't happen so if a member has remained absent from last 20 days in last 20 days of the previous session and in this session if he remains absent for 40 days then that 60 days counting will be over i hope you would have understood let us move to the next point mp has been given means uh, to avoid this option if he has to go on some essential tour foreign tour or, or if he has ill right so he has been given this option of leave of application leave of absence sorry right he can apply and in this case he will go to the chairman for this leave of absence so he'll have to notify to the chairman or speaker whatever the case may be right if they have to remain absent for the longer period so i hope this option is also clear let us move to this last option in which a member of parliament will have to vacate his seat that is double membership so what is the double membership i already have explained so suppose a sitting member of lok sabha 
if he wants to contest election in the Rajya Sabha and there as well in the Rajya Sabha election he has been declared winner. So he cannot represent two houses, right? Similarly, if a member decides to elect, uh, decides to contest from two seats of the Lok Sabha, so Narendra Modi has already done in 2014, recently in 2019 election, Rahul Gandhi from Wayanad and Amethi. Amethi happened to be his uh, traditional seat, but fearing the loss, he went to Wayanad as well, right? But he could not secure the win from Amethi. Had he secured the win from both the seats, he will have to declare the intent that, okay, which seat I want to retain. So let us see these cases one by one. So if elected to both House of Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha, you will have to inform, right, that which seat you want to retain. Otherwise, if you do not inform in a specified time, your Rajya Sabha seat will be automatically vacated. You will have only Lok Sabha. So, you will, if you want to retain Rajya Sabha seat, you will have to declare your intent that, okay, I want to retain this uh, Rajya Sabha seat, so your Lok Sabha will be vacated, but you will have to declare. If not declare, right, in that case, Rajya Sabha seat will automatically go. If member of one house, if elected to the other, so suppose I am a member of Lok Sabha. Now, my term is already pending for next two or three years. Now, I uh, decide to contest the election from Rajya Sabha seat as well. So, in that case, if I get selected to the elected to the Rajya Sabha, in that case, I will have to vacate. My Lok Sabha seat will be automatic because in this case, I have taken a conscious decision. I am already representing Lok Sabha from a constituency and after knowing this that I am representative, I have taken the decision to the Rajya Sabha. And so in that case, I will not be asked, I will not be given this option that inform us that what do you want to retain Lok Sabha or Rajya because that was a conscious decision. Uh, I already knew that I am a member of Lok Sabha and then I am going to the Rajya Sabha. So my Rajya Sabha seat will be re retained, right? While the first house, so if uh, vice versa case, if I would have been the Rajya Sabha member and would have contested Lok Sabha, and luckily if I, I would have won, in that case my Rajya Sabha seat would have gone. So whichever first house or whichever first seat I will I was holding, in case if I secure win on second seat, other house, right? My the first house membership will go. The third situation, if elected on two seats, so it does happen in Lok Sabha or in assemblies, right? Heavyweight leaders like Narendra Modi or any other party, most of the time this Samajwadi party leaders have also fought on occasion from the two seat, fearing the loss from one seat, right? They have fought. So in Rahul Gandhi, as I gave the, you example, Amiti was his traditional seat, right? His father had also fought from uh, this seat as well continuously. So, Amethi and Rai Bareilly, but this time due to anti incumbency, they were fearing the loss from this seat and uh, they were rightly fearing so. So, he went to Vainad as well. He won this seat, he could not secure this seat. In 2014, you had Modi, Varanasi for polarization and Vadodara for security. <laughs> right, Vadodara secured in Gujarat, this was a secured seat, right, and Varanasi because he went there to polarize election in Bihar and uh, what you call Uttar Pradesh. So, he was not sure about this seat, so he took this seat as well, but he won from both the seat, then Vadodara seat he let go, he declared that okay, I do not want to retain this Vadodara seat, so in Vadodara seat later on by elections happened. So, if elected on uh, two seats, from the same house that is Lok Sabha or Rajya Sabha, you will have to inform the choices or both will go. Narendra Modi in 2014, Rahul Gandhi recently, right. Representation of people means uh, two seats, maximum two seats you can fight election on, either from Rajya Sabha or Lok Sabha, you can't be doing that, okay, I as a candidate will fight election from three seats, four seats, no. Representation of people's act does have a bar. Right? So, Rahul Gandhi here is saying, hey ECI, means I am fearing losses from two seats as well, right? Can you allow me to fight from third seat as well? So, ECI is saying that no, beta, there is something called uh, Representation of People Act, which bars, right, prohibits candidate from contesting from more than two seats, right? So, this is the thing. Next point, if elected to the Lok Sabha and Assembly both, then Lok Sabha will go if candidate does not declare his intent, right, within a specified period of time. If he does not declare his intent that whether he wants to be MLA or 
Lok Sabha member, that is member of parliament, then his Lok Sabha seat will go. So I hope these things you would have understood. Let us move to the next slide and let us see by election. So as soon these seats are vacated because of any of the reason that we just discussed either due to voiding or either due to disqualification under article 102 or either due to anti-defection or either due to designation. So for any of these reason if the seat in the member of, par of a member of parliament in parliament gets vacated then there will be something called by election. So ECI election uh, commission of India should conduct election for such vacated seat but there is a caveat if remainder period for that member whosoever has resigned or whosoever has been disqualified if the remainder term of that member is less than one year then the election ele election commission of India can take the call and election commission of India can refuse that okay because election does have administrative cost right the election commission of india can take the call and can refuse the whole election right next point elected representative tenure would erase this serve so elected representative tenure would be for remainder period for the lok sabha and assembly right so if any of the mla or any of the mp from the lok sabha mind you when you are saying MP, MP can be from both the houses, Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha. So here I am a specific. So if any of the MLA or any of the MP that is from the Lok Sabha, if are disqualified and by elections are held, then by election whosoever will be elected, he or she will be elected only for the remainder period. Right. So suppose the term of this MLA or MP was only one year or say two years and he died right so term was to expire into 2022 for example and he expired he died or he has resigned so now when election will happen and new candidate who has been uh, declared winner he cannot uh, say ki i'll get five year in office no he'll serve only for only till 2022 for the remainder period but, but that does not happen in two cases that is in case of president or vice president right when a vice president or president resigns or impeached or removed or dies in office when a new person joins this office he'll join office for full five year term not for the remainder of term right next point not full five years even rs members elected by by election serve for the remainder of term same thing right by election to the ls assembly seats need not to be held if incoming mp mla's term is for less than one year i hope this has already been discussed let us move to the next point after the by election president vice president when elected post resignation death re impeachment removal incumbent serve for the full five year term right we already have discussed this let us move to the next slide so there are certain uh, acts for which elected representative can be disqualified right and in all those situations the decision who will take decision whether that member of parliament has been uh, disqualified or not or will be disqualified or not right differs so in the first case so immediately after election you do have high court which takes the decision so if against any winner candidate if election petition has been filed so in that case high court will take decision right if a member has been disqualified on the grounds mentioned in article 102 in that case president will take the decision but president will not take decision that lonely he'll take decision in consultation with election of commission the third situation is that if any member has been subjected to anti-defection that is mentioned in 10th schedule in that case chairman speaker whatever the case may be speaker or chairman will take the decision 
right at the assembly level it is the speaker who takes the decision at the lok sabha it is speaker at the rajya sabha level it is the chairman which takes the decision right so this remains confusing for many student so immediately after uh, election if election petition has been filed against you right then high court will take the decision if you are subjected to the disqualification mentioned in ground 102 in that case president will take the decision but with eci and if 10th schedule you have been subjected to so in that case head of the house will take the decision so i hope this uh, point will also be clear to you uh, now we are entering into last leg of this chapter that is mcq and uh, for this we have put up only four mcq so this is the first mcq second mcq third mcq and fourth mcq so these are the fourth mcq that you are supposed to attempt and we'll come up very soon with the third video for the parliament as well till then bye bye